real killers in American history. It's so macabre, so bizarre, so deviant that we can't look away. <laughs> Imagine yourself entering the room and discovering five human heads and four skulls that are carefully placed on a shelf. Masks that were made out of human faces, skulls that were decorated bedposts, a belt made out of a woman's breast, and a curtain drawstring made out of human lips. Well, these were the sickening acts of the notorious serial killer, Ed Gein. Let's take a deeper look into the life of the Plainfield Butcher. Ed Gein was a strange guy. It's all about possession. Ted Bundy's confession to his heinous acts is a clear indication of what goes on in a serial killer's sick psyche. While Bundy remains the most sensationalized criminal in American history, there is another individual who gives the crime of possessing a whole new meaning. He committed atrocities so bizarre that to call him a man or even a murderer would be an understatement. This is the story of Plainfield's butcher, Ed Gein. Gein was born on August 27, 1906 in the Wisconsin city of La Crosse. Given the convoluted turn of events that his life has taken, it should be no surprise that he did not have a typical upbringing. As a child, Gein's mother was a very religious person and taught him to be very strict about lust and sinful behavior. According to her, she claimed that all women were prostitutes and that simply glancing at one would be a surefire way to get you into hell. Gein didn't have many friends at school and preferred to be by himself. Despite him being unsocial, his teacher took notice of his unusual manners, which included exploding into bursts of uncontrolled laughter, which he explained was caused by the voices inside his head. They described his awkwardness to be the fault of his demanding mother. According to his family, she would frequently prevent him from making new friends. When they relocated to a farm, their sense of seclusion grew even more severe. At this point, his previously harmless behavior took a more severe turn, and he ended up in jail. During a routine work session on the farm, he and his brother were forced to call the fire department due to a fire breaking out on their property. After they had left, Ed called the police to report that his brother had gone missing. The body of his brother Henry was discovered the following night. His cause of passing was initially recorded as due to suffocation. However, this was not the actual picture of what really happened. The strangest thing had happened to Henry's body. According to the police, he had bruises on his head, which indicated that he had been involved in some sort of struggle. Physicians believe that his passing had occurred before the fire. Eventually, Gein was accused of executing his own brother. Unfortunately, no charges were made against him due to a lack of evidence found. Although Gein's mother had a very invasive nature that did not affect his admiration towards her, he truly respected what she taught him, even when she labeled all women other than herself as prostitutes. After some time, Gein's mother suffered a severe stroke, and he instinctively took it upon himself to take on the responsibility of serving as her primary caregiver. Although he was well known as a talented handyman throughout the town, he was forced to take on low-status jobs to support her and the family. During these difficult times, Gein's political views began to change, and he started reading Nazi literature and cult magazines. This left Gein to become very conservative. In 1945, his mother passed away unexpectedly, leaving him alone on the family's land. After much consideration, he decided to board up every room in the house that his mother had previously occupied. It's possible that he tried to make her last forever by making sure that all of her belongings remained undamaged. It is time for you to do the Lord's work. Are you ready, Edward? I'm ready, Mama. 
As you will see later on in this story, his obsessive attachment to his mother, particularly his strange attempts to keep her memories alive, plays a vital role in the unraveling of his bizarre acts. During the summer of 1957, a woman named Bernice Warden, who worked at a local hardware store, went missing after her cash register was discovered open on the floor, covered in bloodstains. People were starting to wonder where, why the store was locked and where was Bernice Warden. Clearly something had gone terribly wrong by this point. She was last seen with her son Frank, who indicated that Gein was with her and that she was not alone. Upon further inquiry, it was determined that he had visited the business the day before and had informed Bernice that he would be coming the next day to purchase gallons of antifreeze. After discovering this unusual purchase, authorities became concerned and proceeded to go to his home with a search warrant to look further into it. Even though they were expecting that Mrs. Warden's body would be discovered at his farm, many of the cops on duty were on the edge of a nervous breakdown due to the state in which her body was found. Bernice Warden's body hung from the ceiling, upside down, with her head dangling towards the floor. It is believed that she was shot with a 22 caliber rifle. She was found disfigured. Her intestines and organs were found removed and cleaned. This was indeed horrific, was said by a police officer who was the first to see this terrifying scene. Although they had stepped into a scene straight out of a horror film, nothing could have prepared the officers for this. They had discovered the home of a real life psycho. There were five human heads and four skulls carefully placed on a shelf. Masks made out of human faces, skulls decorated bedposts, a skin corset and leggings made out of leg skin, a belt made out of a woman's breast, and a curtain drawstring made out of human lips. One police officer said, Without a doubt, the first nagging question is, why? After the police detained him, Gein confessed to his crimes in a heartbeat. He admitted to having executed two women and dug up many bodies from a local cemetery, all motivated by his need to collect human remains. It was his answer to the why, though, that sent chills down people's necks. After his mother's death, he desired to dress like her. In the aftermath of Bernice Warden's passing, he was arrested and charged with one count of murder. However, he pleaded not guilty by reason of insanity. Gein was diagnosed with schizophrenia, along with mental incompetence, and was unfit to stand trial. He was admitted to a mental institution for further evaluation. Following the diagnosis of his mental condition, he was admitted to the Mendota Mental Health Institute, where he would live for the rest of his life before passing away due to lung cancer in 1984. Following his multiple disorders and gruesome executions, it should come as no surprise that he served as the inspiration for several iconic horror films, including Psycho, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and The Silence of the Lambs. Mr. Leatherface and Norman Bates were genuine individuals who lived in the real world. These characters who haunt our dreams were inspired by America's most insane criminals.